Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. You're watching The Big Picture with me, Frank Rausen Pereira. Google CEO Sundar Pichai on Monday announced an investment of 75,000 crore rupees in India over the next five to seven years through the Google for India Digitization Fund. Addressing Google for India event, Pichai asserted that uh, the latest move is a reflection of the company's confidence in the future of India and its digital economy. Investments will focus on four key areas of India's digitization. This includes enabling affordable access and information to every Indian in their own language, building new products and services relevant to India's unique needs, empowering businesses as they continue to embark in digital transformation and leveraging technology and artificial intelligence for social good in areas like healthcare, education and agriculture. Meanwhile, Reuters quoting sources said Foxconn plans to invest up to $1 billion to expand a factory in southern India where the Taiwanese contract manufacturer assembles Apple iPhones. On this edition of The Big Picture, we will analyze the investment focus in India's digital economy. Joining me on the program today are Arvind Gupta, head and co-founder, Digital India Foundation, Adil Shetty, co-chair, FinTech Committee, FIKI, and uh, Subhimal Bhattacharji, digital technology expert. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition of The Big Picture. All right, Arvind Gupta, I'd like to begin the program with you first. You know, what is it that is attracting an array of investments really as far as uh, Indian digital economy space and the digital space is concerned? Uh, and where does or what is the scope for digital technology in our country? Well, um, you know, if we do uh, $200 billion worth of digital and IT services in India, the scope is a trillion dollars. And um, this is going to increase fivefold. Frank, but I have to explain a couple of things uh, before we, you know, get to the specifics of that answer. The new age industrial revolution, what is called the fourth industrial revolution, is a data and digital industrial revolution. And uh, India is actually leading from the front. Uh, leapfrogging into this. We have leapfrogged many, you know, the first two industrial revolutions happened. India was not a free country. The third one, we were a, not a, you know, really a great free economy. Fourth one, we have the right leadership, the right consumers, the right demand, and we are really, you know, building products for India. And in that, some of the numbers speak for themselves and that this is the reason that you are seeing a lot of investment focus in India in this digital sector. Number one is in the last six years almost, India's uh, internet uh, penetration, the, the users of the internet economy have gone up from approximately 15 crores to 65 crores. And that's, that's, a, that's a 4x, 4.5x increase. More than that, the people who used to spend in the digital world uh, used to be about 10 crore people, give or take. Today, that's moved to 20 crore people. So people buying things, people selling things, doing actually transactions has increased a lot. And uh, so the leapfrogging and the scale opportunity that India presents is very huge. And thirdly, the very big thing is that in India, uh, you know, most of the platforms that we have today are, uh, you know, either incubated in free and democratic uh, countries and I think other democratic countries are seeing a value in this uh, in India as a as a consumer base as somewhere where they can operate more freely. Um, many of our neighbors don't uh, allow a free digital economy, uh, a free digital platforms to uh, really flourish. So India is the next uh, you know the 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 gold destination for uh, all these companies to prosper, both local as well as global companies to prosper. And um, what you're talking about, whether it's uh, Foxconn or Google or many others, uh, there is investment coming in two areas. One is the hard infrastructure, the digital infrastructure, which is you know access, affordable access. India, I must say, and um, has the highest amount of data consumption per person, mobile data consumption per person in the world today, almost two GB uh, average a 12 GB average per month per person at, at the lowest cost, as the lowest cost of data. Nowhere, in, you know, you can get data packs at 100 rupees or 99 rupees a month for, for such a huge amount of data. So, uh, so data affordable access. Two is uh, the, the hardware. The affordable hardware also should be there, very high-end affordable hardware, which is where 
you know, companies like Foxconn and all are manufacturing, planning to manufacture. Samsung already has it. And thirdly is the the destination, the startup ecosystem. Um, and, and, and that's where I think a lot of these investments also are coming in, where you have the you, pipes, the roads, the, the cars and the drivers. And certainly you need all these drivers and, and the cars need destinations. And that's where the startup ecosystem comes into place multiple destinations we have a fellow panelist who creates such uh, destinations so you know so uh, that's where i think the promise of india's digital economy is it's a new age economy it's an economy of the future and uh, i think people are rightly so investing in one of the biggest free economies of the world okay absolutely all right so Adil, this is where I'd like to bring in, bring you in. Uh, you know, Arvind has very uh, beautifully painted the picture for us about how India is a golden destination for these investments to come in. So what are some of the new products and services that we can expect in, in the immediate near future? And if you look at a five-year plan as far as digital economy and the digital ecosystem is concerned. Great question, Frank. Uh, let me take this uh, first from the fintech perspective because I'm on the FIKI fintech committee and also at Bank Bazaar, we deal very closely with banking and financial services. Um, I think the real opportunity is we have uh, the chance to leapfrog what has happened in a lot of uh, developed market. So uh, like uh, Arvind just said, uh, 65 crore users, the technology pipeline and the infrastructure is available we can actually build services which are cutting edge, the latest, and not go through the step-by-step -step, uh, slow process which maybe other economies have gone through. In banking and financial services, the concept is called contactless. Now, today, everyone knows when you need a financial product, be it a, a loan or a mutual fund or an insurance, you think you have to meet someone, you have to sign you know, 10 papers, you have to give your driver's license, your PAN card, uh, maybe some other document. But imagine if all of this right happened on a mobile phone in three minutes uh, and you had that credit card with you or you had that debit card with you or you had that insurance with you. So the big concept right, is contactless. In today, in India, we have the India stack. We have Aadhaar. Like Arvind said, so much infrastructure has been built out that we are uniquely positioned to harness this government-provided common infra and build services which were unimaginable, right, a few years ago, which is a three-minute loan dispersal, three-minute insurance, three-minute mutual fund. Now, the advantage is the following. This is not for uh, only the urban elite. Uh, Arvind said 650 million people have a mobile phone. Every Indian in every town, in every village is getting a mobile phone and getting onto the internet. These people can be provide services, right? A working capital loan for a day, 5,000 rupee loan for a Kirana store. All of that is possible only using contactless because the traditional supply chain is too operationally expensive to make use of this. And I think what COVID has done, right? It has accelerated everything because today we don't have a choice. I can't send someone to uh, a small town or village traveling. It's just not feasible, right? So whatever would have taken many years now is going to happen in a few months. I truly believe, right, that this is a leapfrog moment in India and we need to grab it, grab it with uh, open arms. And what I said for fintech, right, is true for education, is true for uh, uh, commerce, is true mm -hmm. for a number of services which we should reimagine for a post-COVID product and world. Absolutely. I think, you know, companies and policymakers are already reimagining this and we are moving in that direction. We just have to see how it progresses and where we finally reach. You know, uh, Subhimal, this is where I'd like to bring you in now. You know, what is the kind of digital transformation that we have already witnessed? You know, both panelists have spoken about how we've seen, you know, uh, a big leap really as far as the technology is concerned. And what is the kind of transformation do we aspire to see next? Sure, Frank. I think uh, both my fellow panelists have laid uh, the ground realities in terms of what has been the build-up in the last uh, few years. But I would like to say, Frank, that uh, look at the, our readiness today. It's very important. The point of time, the epoch that we are in, uh, it's, it's very, very crucial to understand why everyone is looking at us, what we have done credibly over all these years, uh, you know, 
and of course uh, we are still at uh, about 50% of uh, our internet penetration so there is still a large market to be addressed which is being diligently done through the digital india program uh, the ecosystem of uh, making the hardware the software and the glues in between work and then the interface with the consumers that has uh, steadily grown in the country and and these are some of the indicators that give the confidence now if you ask today uh, over all the last 2 to 3 decades the steady growth of the software and services industry that's one of the biggest confidence building measures that we have demonstrated in the digital technology space all across the world we are not confined to one geography we have expanded our footprints in almost every geography and our service level agreements the commitments to that even in spite of not having a specific data privacy law has been phenomenal that's why we have made our mark we have built our confidence and that's why people are looking at us when everyone is now concerned around what goes on in china and then you know newer markets are being explored at uh, why we are being thought of very credibly is because of that uh, you know demonstration over all these years about how we look at this space what is the skill set available how we have moved ahead uh, with what is required and on top of it even if you see the you know the growth of the hardware industry compared to a base and strength around software the last few years particularly in the time of uh, this government that has been phenomenal look at the extent of electronic manufacturing now that is happening in the country uh, lot lots of the mobile handsets are being manufactured in the country in uh, you right now are at a point where your mobile internet users have also taken over uh, from the you know traditional desktop users and all so phenomenally the rural push the push on e-commerce the you know ecosystem that sustains uh, product and technology development i think all of that puts us in a position to mm-hmm. think that we can take the plunge and that's where all these investments are coming up you know right. the geo investments have been possibly to the tune of now 25% and some conversations are already on as you have seen that google might also get it but even if you leave that aside uh, mm. look at the microsoft venture fund you know as well as the small small investments here and there that many venture firms are also looking at and particularly in these times you know this is phenomenal this this is something this is a not only a game changer but it's a big confidence building booster in these times when we are you know all all kind of a, in a uh, evaluating an uncertain economy so having said all so right. i i just okay. like to add one point uh, frank that uh, mm. the possibilities around usage of digital technology for the domestic market for the international uh, you know market the possibilities that we see around your work from home the online education the uh, tele health consultations these are phenomenal areas where we can energize our youth and as the prime minister today in the you know youth skill day has said that we need to skill reskill and upskill i think i think sure. this is nothing more than uh, the or, or the best time that uh, to say that okay all right so i'm going to take this particular point forward with you arvind gupta this point that so we were was making about the rural push and how there is a large market still to be tapped as far as rural india is concerned now this is something that uh, the google ceo also stressed upon you know in his address on monday he spoke about how there is immense scope and potential for digital technology in vernacular languages so what is the kind of economic scope there and how do we push it forward so um, uh, frank and i think um, whether it's google or anybody else everybody realizes that india uh, digital india is more digital bharat now which is basically it is going to move beyond cities and it's already has and it's uh, it's gone to villages uh, covid uh, good or bad uh, the reverse migration um, has caused people who are using uh, you know mobile phones smart smartphones a lot in the in the metro cities are now back in towns uh, smaller towns villages 
and they are they are used to the um, the empowerment that the digital technologies has brought to them so uh, they are going to you know use that continue using for their experiences of what adil was saying to take a loan or um, you know take uh, take micro credit um, do transactions to buy some clothes online so i think there is a whole new consumer which probably is uh, digitally literate uh, i call it uh, but not prob- you know alphabetically literate and that's where uh, alphabetically literate especially in english so that's where the local languages will come into play and that's going to be a very big factor we have seen the success of this in digital india uh, subhibal mentioned this when you do digital india uh, one of the design parameters is it has to be in in as many languages as possible um, you know upi supports some 17 18 languages uh, which is india's biggest success story as public infrastructure uh, what adil mentioned uh, aadhar uh, you know the india stack all these are available in multiple languages so there is a certain design principle in india which is uh, which is unlike the model so let me you know also talk about this why everybody is very attracted to india because there is i've lived and worked in silicon valley for many many years and in 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 that uh, space i think it's a uh, you know what what is uh, very very critical is that the, you know our, india is innovating bottom up our technology solutions can work in towns can also work in small cities can work for everybody the bit mm-hmm. sizing of transactions uh, whether it's education health fintech is really happening in india and it is in this space that uh, i think india has actually genuinely um, done done uh, uh, you know really leapfrogging and uh, innovation at scale uh today upi which is india's unified payments interface which actually google front ends uh, and whatsapp is trying to front end uh does 1.3 billion transactions a month that's more transactions than all gateways put together so uh you know and people are doing all sorts of people are doing from all across the country these transactions on the upi framework um so sure. the 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 point i'm trying to make is that india's innovation number one is bottom up it will reach it is already the the access and the affordability has reached villages towns everywhere um mm-hmm. local languages is a way to go voice is a way to go um, all these foreign companies are investing in that potential three this potential is not limited to india the prime minister has said it multiple times that innovation for the next 6 billion is going to come from india Absolutely. many of the countries across the world are looking at india and what we are doing and they want to take what the india success model the india's lessons uh, and implemented in their country so all these entrepreneurs all these startups don't just have a market in india they have a market beyond india um, absolutely and and you know the us model which is addressing the top of the pyramid uh, has done well uh, the chinese model is limited india model is solving the problem for the next 6 billion so it's going to be it's not just a india play any longer and if you look 5 to 10 years which is a very very long time in the digital world um this all all these startups and all these great innovative ideas are going to spread all across the planet absolutely so the time is for the india model and we are going to see that absolutely. going forward at least in the next 5 to 10 years is what the panelists are suggesting let me go to adil shetty now you know adil i'm going to go back to a point that you were making initially on the program in your opening remark you spoke about 3 minute uh, banking you spoke about how financial services are now available at each one's fingertips but that also poses a poses a problem doesn't it i mean security is also of utmost importance and this is where ai and uh, cutting edge technology will come into being so that financial services are robust and do not fall prey to unscrupulous elements yeah absolutely frank i think in today's day and age right we're all reading the papers and seeing tv every day so we know the threats out there the threats might be within the country the threats might be from outside the country but it's a time to be very vigilant um i think there are two ways we can think about it from each company side right i think management needs to realize that information security is critical uh, and it's something that's required by the information technology act uh, today there are world class certifications out there there's a pci dss there's iso 27001 isms i think uh, at a management level right every company needs to take responsibility to make sure that there are these certifications secured the data is locked down set up information security practices i think today the advantage we have is 
uh, all the global operators are here. So whether you need really good web conferencing software, whether you need a great firewall, the companies are available. And you know, with uh, the right price point, I think even MSMEs are able to think about information security services. I think Subimal covered it earlier. The data protection law, I think, is also going to be a significant step forward. So today, the framework we have is the Information Technology Act. The data protection law is a significant step forward where it clearly identifies data controller, has responsibility, has consent, scope of use. So I think it'll be really good if in this kind of environment, one company step up, but also the data protection law steps in to set a common law, right, that everyone needs to comply with and has uh, consequences uh, for what needs to be done. So I think that would be a significant step forward, Frank. Absolutely. You know, uh, so Subimal, uh, let me bring you to the picture now. So what challenges do you foresee, uh, you know, going forward and what uh, do, you, do you see any stumbling blocks or any roadblocks in our digital push? No, I think, Frank, at this time, uh, as uh, Adil has just also mentioned, uh, the Data Protection Act is one part, but a whole lot of uh, policy changes uh, and, and work is on the anvil in each of them. You know, the e-commerce uh, laws are being looked at. The IT Act itself is being looked at again. The role of intermediaries are being looked at. So all of that, and of course, the data protection law, now all of that offer a lovely framework where we are updated on all counts. We, are, we ensure that the best of the, and the best of secure uh, possibilities are enabled from a legal point of view. From a technology point of view, the focus on AI, blockchain, and all enabling uh, parameters are being harnessed. And, you know, I think Niti Ayug is also doing a very good job in trying to, uh, you know, remain on top with all the line ministries also as far as uh, their involvement is concerned. And most importantly, if you see our consumers and our citizens themselves are becoming far much aware and oriented in terms of what are best and you know secure practices. So I think a, a kind of a mature scenario is emerging where the laws are there, the technology is there, the consumers are there. And on top of it, the law enforcement uh, mechanism is also getting uh, alerted and working. If you look at the CERTINS uh, advisory around uh, the Chinese, uh, you know, phishing attempts and all, that was a very timely uh, act, you know, much different from what you normally do. If, if you complain to the cybercrime portal of the Home Ministry, you are given a reference number. Not only that, it is followed up with the respective state polices and everything. So these are all confidential, uh, confidence building measures. But as you say, you know, always challenges remain when you implement many things at a time. And then, of course, the task is very gigantic because, uh, you know, not all good people are always there on the cyberspace talking of good things. A lot of crime syndicates and everyone are working. They always try to remain on top. So we have to be, uh, you know, stringent in terms of dealing with them. So I think we all, since the mandate and uh, the... I would say the motivation is very clear, whether it's in the government and, of course, the industry. Uh, there is no reason, you know, we should think that uh, this would become any kind of a stumbling block in the forward march. Okay, yes, Arun Gupta, you, you had a point to make. Go ahead. But what Subhibal is saying is also, and what actually Adil said, this itself is an opportunity. Cybersecurity today itself, a homegrown cybersecurity solution, um, ensuring uh, citizen safety, uh, preventing attacks, um, is both an employment opportunity as well as a technology opportunity. So I think there is, a, I mean, all, what all of us are saying, what, wherever there is a stumbling block, whenever we use the word stumbling block, I look at it as, a, as an opportunity. And I think um, the smart entrepreneurs and startup uh, enthusiasts are actually already solving those problems and um, uh, building more local uh, and uh, uh, solutions. The apps are already coming in place. Yes, absolutely. I think there is, uh, I mean, whichever uh, uh, category you think of, um, whether, and, and the government actually just does a little bit of things. I mean, we have a startup fund, by the way, a 1.5 billion, 10,000 crore startup fund. We also mm. keep doing all these hackathons as uh, the government keeps doing hackathons. If you see, 
from a video conferencing solution to now apps in multiple category so this also gives that initial push and recognition to the startup community and then they you know then they they know that these are the top 10 top 20 players so it is uh, the government is working as an enabler as a catalyst but uh, you know in the whole uh, startup community it's the startup enthusiasts and the innovators which are really going to take over yes adil you wanted to make a point go ahead yeah thank uh, to your point as to what support we need i think you said uh, what more do you need or what what is required so uh, uh, see i think the consumers in india are moving very very fast uh, so at bank bazaar for example 50 million consumers they want it contactless now we are asking for certain regulatory changes to allow us to use the latest technology so for example reserve bank of india did a fantastic move pre covid january 2020 they introduced video kyc very first time i don't have to come to your house i do a video on your mobile and you get your loan it's a brilliant brilliant policy decision but we are also asking for central kyc clarification we are asking for more support on e kyc more support on derived kyc so i think industry is constantly engaging regulators listening but having taken care of information security and privacy i think that we need some support for faster adoption of these latest technologies that arvind and subhimal have been talking about so better guidelines and faster implementation is what you're looking at and that's the, that's what the industry is looking for all right subhimal what's the best way forward i think you know that dialogue between industry government uh, that has to uh, you know be enhanced i think uh, investments uh, have to be made in this sector so uh, i would think you know a lot of the uh, capital that is you know possibly still uh, lying unused can be used in this sector this is i think the last 3 months around covid this has been the best message that has been coming that you know this is a sector that is going to stay the global investments have uh, you know amplified this further so i would think mm. we all should work as a collective uh, team and effort everything will fall in place okay all right and arvin gupta close the show for us with your concluding remark see the digital and data economy is the future and uh, india is very well placed in this um there is uh, you know uh, what adil says what subhimal says if we have been very fast in law making covid has accelerated certain amount of policy making uh, telemedicine came about in covid uh, the the legality of telemedicine teleconsultations uh, e pharmacies similar uh, agility will keep happening but one thing you have to understand um, rules and regulations always lag behind innovation innovation is always going to be ahead and that's where the charm of innovation is innovators make their own rules and then you know then certain uh, policy uh, decisions are made india is a great economy the demand that is coming from all across india is 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 absolutely um, uh, you know what is attracting this investment um, mm-hmm. we have uh, a very reliable uh, digital infrastructure today which is at scale both the the bandwidth and the networks uh, to the soft infrastructure what is called india stack or the aadhaar stack and um, on top of it i think we have great innovators who are solving problems for the world now they're looking inwards and solving problems for india so uh, you know whether it's uh, we've seen global leadership uh, of indian origin now we are seeing the same leadership in india and uh, we have right. to trust this leadership to solve problems which are hard problems to solve societal problems and they are taking up the challenge um, and and hitting the ball out of the park Okay all right on that note then I'll call it a wrap on this edition of the big picture thank you to all my guests for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us what's coming out of this discussion is that the scope for digital transformation in india is immense india is a golden destination for companies both local and international to prosper and uh, you know we still have a large market in rural india that is untapped that needs to be tapped fully to its full potential is what the panelists are suggesting we need to go in for an extra rural push india model uh, is fast evolving and is here to stay and we will take the india model beyond india across borders and make it work internationally the investments also come at a very crucial juncture and it's a confidence booster at a time like this with that it's a wrap see you again next time